see him all over the place. And, of course, uh, he was the first player taken uh, in the NFL draft in 1996. Keyshawn, uh, great to have you back. And uh, I feel like we've, we've been on together all week talking about things. But I want to start with uh, your, your, your league, uh, the Pac-12, which uh, has been missing in action for a long time. And they have a new commissioner. And is it possible that maybe, uh, Keyshawn, as we say hello to you, that they can finally get it right? Good afternoon. Well, we, hey, what's how you doing, Paul? I hope so, right? Larry Scott didn't do his job nearly well enough to put us on the map. So hopefully the new commissioner, I saw it come across the scroll, new commissioners in the Pac-12. Let's figure out the television rights. Let's figure out how to put some economics in some of the school pockets outside of some of the big boosters and see where we can go. Let's see if we can compete with the other two, three conferences, the Big Ten, the SEC, obviously, and the ACC, if we can get into a real, real competition with them now. Because it's, yeah, you know, it's just really been, I mean, I know it's sad for you. I mean, you, you played at one of the biggest uh, names in, in the history of the school, of the sport. And, and, and now uh, I guess you could easily say the, the Pac-12 has become a punching bag. Hey, let me ask you about something else before I get to something I, I, that we have discussed earlier in this week. And that's the uh, name, image, and likeness. And you've heard the conversations going on for years. It looks like it's about to become a reality as someone who, was, was certainly a big man on on, on campus and in, in, in Hollywood of all places. Uh, you understand the appeal for young players and what they want. Uh, there's a lot of debate. Should they get it? Should they not? Where are you on NIL? Absolutely, they should get paid. Uh, how you, you know, where you put the money, how guys are getting paid from what name, likeness, and image. If a car dealership decides to pay a guy, great, so what? I mean, you know, if a tennis shoe company decides to pay a guy, so what? They deserve to be paid. Coaches get paid. I mean, the late John Thompson was the innovator of basketball coaches signing shoe contracts. He was the first to do so. So why can't a player? Like, you know, and I know the argument, right? The argument is, well, you know, the coaches is part of their salary. The player's salary is their education. Yeah, okay, all right. How many of those educations actually pan out in a young man's career when it's all said and done? I know so many athletes that got a degree without a damn job, and they can't even get a job from the university because the university acts as though they didn't put millions of dollars in the university's pockets when they're done playing. You know that, Paul. You know, you, you've been in the SEC just as a conference and around the country. Guys graduate, they can't get a job. They didn't make it in the NFL. They graduate with a degree, and all they have is a piece of paper in their hand. So, hell yeah, they're supposed to get paid. Keyshawn, we get a lot of calls here, uh, and, and you know, a lot of old school people, you know, guys that have played the game, and, and I realize it's, they're from a different era, but, but some are not that far removed, and they just don't understand it. And I know you answered the question a minute ago, but I'd like you to speak to those who, who feel like there was, there was a time – when you played for SC because, uh, you know, you felt a loyalty and, and you felt like you were getting something in return, an education, you were, you were, you were, you were being helped and enhanced in that community. What, what would you say to those who, who really are having a very difficult time adjusting to where we currently are and especially where we're about to go? I would say that times have changed. Things have evolved. Science is different, not the same. And, if this was that era, they wouldn't be having a problem. I don't have a problem with it. And I could imagine, Paul, the amount of money that I made for the University of Southern California then, and I still do to this day. I went into a USC football game, oh, about two years ago, and I went into a luxury suite. And it was named the Keyshawn Johnson Suite. They had pictures of me and everything and all over the place. I didn't get a – you think when they sold that suite to some some big-time donor that they explained to them, oh, Keyshawn doesn't get any of this money, but it's the Keyshawn Johnson suite. I didn't complain. I didn't say anything. I just walked in, looked at it, took the tour. It's like, wow, this is really nice. Pictures of me jumping up and down, trophies. But I didn't get any of that money. I didn't complain about it. It's nuts. It's like, okay, that was then. That's the deal. Now these younger guys that have an opportunity to benefit on it, they should benefit on it. And I, and I think people shouldn't look at it. Yes, you love your university. If if someone can go to Toledo and hit pay dirt 
on their name, likeness, and image doesn't mean that they don't love Toledo. They don't love Bowling Green. They don't love Alabama. They don't love Auburn. They still love the university. But in, in return, they're benefiting from it. They're allowing themselves to profit from it, which they shouldn't. Thanks for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+.